one of the first things that we need to do is identify the classes themselves. We need to figure out what in our system are going to be classes and how do we decide that? Well, a good beginning part is to understand that classes tend to be nouns and operations tend to be verbs. And we can look at our existing documentation and find nouns and verbs to help us identify classes and operations. One of our primary documentations is the so far is the use case diagrams. And on here we have this convenient arrangement of verb noun. So we can look at that and we can say, okay, well, let's start just making a list, movie info. And we might want to say, you know, related to that is to remove. We know we have a remove here, maybe. And then there's a DVD. And then an operation that goes with that is remove. And we have um, location. And associate that with is release. Notice how I can go through this and I can identify all the nouns and verbs on the use case diagram. Notice when I get to this next one, here's DVD as the noun, and I already have DVD, so I can go up here and say, oh, well, there's another operation with it, another verb with it, dispose of, but I don't have to create a new object DVD. And here I have destroy and sale. So two other things that go with the DVD. I have an inventory object, so I can say inventory is a noun, so it might possibly be a class. Notice when we're going through here, we're not making decisions about whether these will actually be a class or not. Um, but th this is just a good place for us to start. Okay, I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and gather these nouns and verbs. So after I got done adding all the nouns and verbs from the use case diagrams, this is the list I come up with. And I don't want to think that then these will all become classes. I want to be able to look and see what actually is a class or what can, can be combined. So I noticed as I went through, there wasn't a lot of organization, so I saw some different movie things together. So I'm going to go ahead and collect them together. So these movies and uh, here's some that are kind of related to movies. I'm going to put this up here with this one. Let's go ahead and put it all the way up here with these ones. And then move this one up. And so then I can just kind of organize things so I can more clearly see them to make decisions about them. Now that I've got them a little organized, I really want to look at them and decide which ones are going to be actual classes. So DVD seems like a really good candidate. Location, I'm not sure about that. So each DVD needs to have a location. So um, when we think about a DVD location, we think in the warehouse, what, what build it, room it's in, what shelf it's on. And so that might be, um, that location might be descriptive enough that it needs to be a class. Inventory, so we definitely will want to have a class that includes the inventory. Uh, we've got movie, movie list, movie info, movies. Well, what's the difference between a movie and movies? What's the difference between movies and a movie list? So here we get into this, what are all these things? Movie status, the status is whether it's rented or um, being fixed or uh, currently available. So that kind of movie status, that almost seems like a property, right, of a movie. So one of the things we want with the movie is we want it to have a status. So this then becomes, rather than, um, rather than a class in itself, it becomes an attribute of the movie class. So I'm just going to move that over and maybe make a note um, that this is more likely attribute. I'm just really getting to know the system, right? Attribute of movie. Movie info. You know, is that going to be something separate and individual, or is that going to be an attribute of a, of a movie? So here we want to talk about the difference between complexity. And if movie status is just really one of three or four values, then it simply can be a single attribute with one value. Movie info, on the other hand, might be much more complex. It might have 
um, actors and how long the movie is, what the rating is, what studio produced it, who the director was. I mean, this might be very involved and contain a lot of information. So that might be big enough that instead of making it a complex attribute of movie, we want it to actually be its own class. So this seems involved enough to do that. I'm going to leave that as a class. Now movie file is just another version of a DVD of a movie, right? So here we see DVD and movie file. So that's a streaming file. These are really two different versions of a movie. And if we look over here, <clears throat> I don't think we see it on our use cases um, because we haven't, these use cases haven't been expanded to deal with the movies and with the movie files they've just been the dvds but we see the same things happening to dvds and movie files so i'm going to put these together because i think these are really really similar the dvd and the movie file and in fact they are um, specific cases of a movie so i'm going to put the movie up here above them and say okay this is these two are they're very specific, but this is the general case. And this one is a specific case. And the same with that movie file, that it is a specific case of movie. All right, location. Oh, we talked about that already. Inventory, movie, okay, movie list. Uh, is that going to be its own class or is that something that we can gather from something else? So a movie list would just be a list of the movies and so uh, this may in fact be um, an maybe not a class of its own. So I'm just going to indent that and consider that as something else. Movie info, we decided to keep this up. Movies so if we want to view a movie list, we want to browse the movies, those sound very much the same and maybe we're expressing exactly the same use case just using different terms. So I'm going to combine these two and put browse here. So we're going to view the movie list, we want to browse, so that would be move through it. And I'm going to consider that the same thing. So notice how I'm going through and really analyzing that initial first rough draft. Let's keep working through here and I see I've got movie info twice. So I'm just going to move up the operation up here, the verb that goes with it. Filter, search term, sort term, add. So do I need a whole class that identifies filter? Do I have need a whole class that is of type search term or sort term? These are ones that I think that will not be uh, entire classes are more likely going to be attributes of another class or an operation of another class. So I'm going to move those over. I'm not sure that <clears throat> that's going to be exactly what I want. Customer needs to be able to log in and charge. And now we have a question about is the customer going to be represented in the system? And in the and this depends if we're going to be storing information about a customer. We certainly have a customer that is an external user of the system, and that's a given, but is not part of the system. But then we need to decide if we need to represent them inside the system. And in the movie rental case, we do need to represent them inside the system because we're going to keep information about them. If they're going to be able to log in, we need to know their username and password. If they're going to be able to rent movies, we need to store payment information about them. So the customer will, in fact, be a class of its own and be represented inside the system. A transaction seems enough information to keep a class shipped. So record, this is um, recording that a movie has been shipped and this is more likely a status of a movie like what you're doing is changing the status of the movie it is rented it is that being shipped so it could be rented when the user first rents it that makes it unavailable then once it gets shipped we could change that status so this then becomes more of an update status and so I'm also going to move that aside I'm going to make that note that this is just really a change in status and so it won't be a class of its own. 
late fees, damage fees, fees. Notice that these three are all different kinds of fees. So the fee seems to be the general case. And then this needs seems to be a um, specific case of fees. And this indicates a generalization relationship, right? Just like we saw uh, earlier, that when you have a general case and specific cases, then we get into there what is a general sort of thing. Uh, a receipt. So is a receipt an individual thing? Uh, is it? Is it an operation to, to send a receipt, right? Uh, is it a display? Is it something that's simply going to go to the interface? So this is something that we might want to think about over time and not sure whether that will make a class itself or not. An account. So uh, <clears throat> what is an account? Is that associated with the customer? So is this something that the customer has? Is an account? So I think that we could move that up here as something a customer has rather than, uh, and then we need to decide, is it big enough that it's a separate class of its own, or is it small enough that it's an attribute of a customer? So, so we need to decide, um, class of its own or attribute of customer. So we'll just make a note that that's something as we design this, we'll, we'll get an idea of what we want. Okay, here we have a rental. So the use case would have said process rental, process return. And these are, um, these appear to be changing in status as well, right? That um, this is just a change in status of movie. So I'm going to, I'm going to add that on here. And we see that these two are also a change in status. So really, the rental process, the rental is changed in status of movie. And so these won't be actual classes. These will more likely be um, maybe even operations to change the status of the movie. So that's initial beginning. And this was, we used the use case diagrams to be able to identify potential classes. There are other ways to do that. There's uh, brainstorming where you just get together as a group and you just brainstorm what, what might be potential classes. Another way is to use um, common object lists. So these exist because so many systems have very common um, objects or classes that there's lists of them that you can go through and, and look at and see if there are any. And then there are also patterns that have common combinations of classes and how they interact with each other. So picking what are going to be classes is an important first step to creating an analysis class diagram.